Pops on first tonight. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Come on in. Can you find us on there? Are we live? Yeah, we're live. We got three people on. Oh, I could only see you. Remember, we're on Ecamm, so if you click the Ecamm, hi, Melody. If you click the ECAM in the top, we will be able to see you with your comments. Hey Diane, hey Bettina. How is everybody on this fine Tuesday? Howdy, howdy. Hi Diane, I see you. Hi Chandra. Is it Chandra or Chandra? I like it both ways. Hey, 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 Facebook user is, hey, hey, I got a hello, Facebook user. Remember to go click that little ecam link at the top. Your sound is super staticky. Anybody else? Let's see. It finally stopped raining. Yeah, we've been having rain out of nowhere, too. Um... Anybody else have staticky, like Jen? I wonder if I have my sound too high. Hold up. Ooh, that is kind of high. Okay, let me know if that's better. Hi from New York, or New NC, North Carolina. How could I miss that? My mom and my sister are in North Carolina. Can you not say the page? I can for, I'll get two people. And North Carolina was one of them. Hey, Barbara. Uh, North Carolina, Rhonda Carr. Hey, Rhonda. Hi, Melissa. How are you? Okay, I, I think, Jen, did I take care of the static? I had my, um, my big old huge mic um, turned way too high. I hope everybody's having a good day, too, Dan. I really do. So I'm going to give everybody a few minutes to come in and uh, where's my sponge? Yes, my hands are dirty. Hey, Catherine from North Carolina too. So, you know, you're both from North Carolina. I know it's a big state, but I wonder how close you guys all are. Rosemary, hi. Oh, all better. Okay, yeah, I have my... I have my mic, it's a big mic. It's like great big. And uh, I had my sound on my computer turned up pretty loud. So let's see. Oh, you're in North Carolina too? Okay, so all of you that are in North Carolina, how close are you to a little town called Warsaw? Um, Kenansville, which I think, hi Shirley, I think, I see your name Shirley, um, so you logged in correctly, um, I think it's like 40, hi Cindy, 45 minutes maybe from Wilmington, anyway, any of you guys that are in that area, um, you don't see mom on, do you? Okay, so I don't see, not having luck with the video. Is anybody else having problems with the video? I am on the internet. Um, anyway, anybody that's anywhere in that vicinity, let me know. I'm going to be back there in September. Um, we are going to have a surprise party for my mother's 80th birthday. So, um, if you're back there in that area, video's good with you, Jen. Anybody else having video? If I think, Melody, you might log out or close out and come back in and see if the video works better for you. Um, when I do exam, I can't see you. Hey, Connor. Um, Lucy, I'm not sure what you mean. 
two and a half hours. Oh, so you know DM where Warsaw is. 45 minutes from Wilmington near Jacksonville. Okay, so my, my mom and my sister live back there in Warsaw or Keenansville or right there about. So I will be back there in September. Maybe we might have to, um, it's gonna be a quick trip in and out, but we might have to see if anybody can um, meet up for a quick meet. And let's see, Carla, hi Carla. And Blue Jay Brooks said, when I, do, when I do ECAM, I can't see you. When you do ECAM, you can't see me? Hmm. Well then, okay, can you see me right now, Lucy? Because I see you, which means you're in E. Oh, wait, add to the broadcast. Oh, no, I didn't want to do that. Hold on. Whoops, come back here. Remove from the broadcast. Sorry. I just put you up on the screen. Um, tell me if you see me now, because I do see your name, which means you're in. Um, somebody says that would be awesome, and I'm not sure who that is. Hi, Olga. Okay, so tonight, in keeping with our Christmas in July theme, um, that's odd. Two people are saying that. Invite group members. Let me try that one more time. Okay, and if you can't see, then just back out through Facebook and just put your name in the comments until we figure out what that's all about. So, in keeping with our theme of Facebook, of uh, Facebook, Christmas in July, tonight I am going to make my little birdie, birdie baker dish. Um, these are good. You can actually use, use these as little serving platters. Um, They're super cute on the table as well. And to honor my little birdie, I gave them some flowers. So we have some holiday flowers. There are um, poinsettias, poinsettias in there. There are Christmas balls with little um, pine, pine ferns sticking out and um, holly leaves and other fun little Christmassy flowers, pine cones, so um, fun little Christmas. Um, Melody, your phone doesn't support Ecamm. That's okay, just come in um, the normal way will be fine. Hey Rachel, hope you're feeling better and keeping um, your new surgical elbows out of trouble. Um, so this rolling pan is all little holiday flowers and it looks so good in the clay and so nice and deep. And I already made the matching stamps. So it has, look at this little pine cone um, and leaves. And this is the little Christmas ball with the pine cones and the leaves. And this is just a fun little Christmassy flower. Wait, where's my camera? Christmassy flower. And it is a set of five. And the little, there's a little flower in here, just a little filler flower. And then there's a little filler holly leaf. And so that, this set of five, we'll have the little filler flower and the little holly leaf thrown in. So it's gonna be, you're purchasing a set of five, but I'm throwing these two little one filler flowers in um, because when I run them, where these fit right on what would be a little excess throwaway. Hey, Marianne, what would be throwaway parts of the wood. And so I decided to stick these two, whoops, wait, which one? This one. Eh, eh. Stick these two on there and just throw them in because otherwise that little piece of wood was going to be thrown in the trash. And I would rather throw it your way. So we are going to make the birdie baker. Um, I do, oh wait, it was in this group, right? It was in the public group that I made the um, sunny flower. The what? 
sunny flowers. Will you hand me that? I forgot about that. I do have, um, I do have, we did the sunny flower um, with the little Yorkie stamp um, several weeks back, and I fired those, and I wanted to show you, oh, they were right there, and I wanted to show you um, just, gosh, I hate these cameras being backwards, just how cute this thing came out. Is that just not adorable? Um, this little booby right here, you can see where I grabbed a hold with my fingers, um, transporting it, but that's okay. And then this one, this is the one I kind of dappled my sponge in the color to give it more of that 3D cloudy kind of look, and it came out really cool too. Look at that little cute, cute thing. Is that not adorable? Hey, Deb. You just missed our dishes that we did from a few weeks back. They came out of the glaze. And, um, you know, I used the Mako stroking coat. And when if I should have brought a piece that was only bisque fired, it bisque fires bright and shiny. I love it. Um, but because as you see, I have all of this and I have all the back um, that I don't want to leave just raw clay. So I dip that in um, Jessica's 2167 clear um, and it this looks amazing. Now I will tell you that I also did the sunny pod dish. Remember I did that over the, you can see the quirky shape here, um, over the quirky dual drape form. And look how much height I've got to it. And this came out really cute, except, hey Cindy, except I will have to say, well one, I didn't put um, enough coats of the stroking coat because you know when I'm in a time limit here, I try to hurry and get the glaze on so I can get like the stencil off and everything. So word of caution, make sure you put a coat, kind of fan it, let it dry, and another coat, at least two really good, two to three really good coats. And I will tell you, um, the yellow, though that yellow is a really pretty color, it did not show up really well on just the B mix. Um, so I would probably put a base coat down, let that dry, um, and then put my stencil on. But yeah, these are super, super cute. And instead of having, um, I probably would have just done a circle in the middle or left it plain. Um, so learn, learn from that and you know, make sure you put some thick coats like this. You know, these came out, these came out really well. Look at the colors in that. And that's that teal next time. Um, those came out really cute. So I wanted you to see, was any of the other stuff over there? Um, I don't think any of the other stuff we did in this group. I think we did in other group. Other than maybe Marvelous Oval. Let me see the Marvelous Oval. And I had my Marvelous Oval set come out as well. Look at how cute those are. And it's funny because I have blue, blue, and then green. Well, let me turn it over so it'll drop down. And then green was up here and the green in the middle. So let me pull those out. And again, um, I think the yellow against the B mix, I think I might um, put a background color. Um, and yeah, Jen, uh, I see you post a lot with this set as well. In fact, I think we came close in some of our colors. So I did a multicolor and then a solid and then a solid. And the 
these make great little serving dishes or a little art set as well. Um, oop, fall. What I wanted you to see some of the finished pieces now that my kiln is back up and running. Uh, we are running for full blast. We have so much blazing, um, so much firing to do. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Swallow rum. Okay. Um, when is the roller and the stamps available? Well, if you peek-poo at my website, you will see they're already there. Told you this time, I already have them up there. Um, I've been trying to um, get them up there uh, when I show them when I can. Um, so, let me, let me switch you to the overhead here. Barbara, is the Yorkie plate? Yes, it was the one for Jessica. Um, both of them. I just didn't know which one was going to come out the best. Um, sure enough, it's there, huh, Deanne? It's on, uh, Luann, it's on, the rolling pin is on the textured rolling pin page. It should be in the upper left corner, the very first one. And on the stamps, I, I'm pretty sure I moved that to the top as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fudge this a little bit because my um, my yellow rib didn't make it up here. And I'm not so, when I try to use my metal rib, I'm just going to gouge this. So I'm going to kind of fudge a little bit and wipe it with my sponge and hope I don't cause my roller to stick. And we have a big shadow coming in that window. Okay. I'm going to, when I roll, okay, so this is, um, I have not put this in mineral roll yet. I will, but I wanted to use it. It's not going to hurt it, but I will tell you, oh, that's good. That worked perfect. Right there. Oops, was right there. I think it's the top. Anyway. Um, it's not going to hurt it, but I wouldn't do it for too awful long. You know, you still have it all over here. When you hold it, if you just stand there and hold it up, then it was perfect, like right there. <laughs> oh, come on. Okay, so, um, but what I do is I take and I soak it down with mineral oil. On my website, I do have a page up there that has care sheets that explain, um, almost well that explain how to care for your your pins and it would be the same for your stamps um, this is very deep I will tell you if you go uh, experience if you go any much deeper than this it's gonna burn the pen and it's gonna crack the lid may not crack it today but it'll crack it tomorrow so um, if you need to try it out super fast when you get it feel free but then um, then definitely get it soaked in some mineral oil. If you're going to put it away for a while, um, if you're going to put it away for a while, make sure you soak it down first good, good first, so that it doesn't dry out because these are wood. They will dry out. Um, that went under what's new. Oh, well, that's interesting because I didn't put it there. Yeah, that sunflower wedges is, is a really fun pen. Okay, so also these pens are super long and what runs through the middle of them is a little metal rod. Well, these were meant to roll cookie dough and, and softer things than what we roll. And when you try to use the handles, they're gonna flex. Um, that's just the nature of a, a long rolling pen. And you can get an uneven impression. What I do is I put my rolling pin down and I put put my hands on it and I press and roll. And I also put my clay below my waist. Um, if I stood up at this table, oh, you guys can't see me. Let me, um, 
if I stood up at this table, well, I guess you can't see, but my table's clear down here. My apron is all crooked. Okay, so what I will do is I will stand up, move my chair, and you see that the, the clay is below me so that I have um, the downward pressure all the way across. I used to try to roll on my slab table, which was okay the first part of it, but when I get across, it was too tall for downward pressure, and I couldn't keep the pressure and keep my nice texture on the far side. So this is what I've learned, um, and I don't. Uh, I always stand on the floor below me. I tend to fall off of things, so so I'm going to press this down. And I'm going to press, and it doesn't have to be terribly, terribly hard or anything like that. Um, but this is a really, I'm going to have to stick my head under the camera to get across this, so I apologize. At least it's freshly colored and I don't have a white stripe, like I did. Let me go across this. And... If I have it, I usually do it like on a coffee table where I can really get across. But look at this. Where are we? Look at that. Can you see that? And if you look at that texture sideways, I mean, that sticks out super far. Um, and then I'm just going to lift it a little bit. So, let me move this aside for a second. Where did I leave? Where did I leave? Oh, shoot. Could you grab that? It's over there and the pen is in the, um, the pen is in that other form from what I was working on earlier. Over there. So you'll just have to take that off and flip it. You want a board? Here. Here's a board. Here's a board. Okay, so how these were designed were to, they've got a hole in the template, they've got a hole in the um, form, and if I put it, he's, he's getting it, I had it set on, I was working on something else. Will that flip? <laughs> it will probably flip in flop because it hasn't set up long enough, but I need the pen. Don't hit that party. I need the, the round cord. Perfect. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. So how those were set up was the little pin. If you have the um, Jared Pottery's wheel assist, it's got the round circle. I sell a round circle with my pin um, that will fit his but the pin is bigger, so you have to buy the little insert. Um, but you just put it in there, put your template on, put your form on, and I drew it so that, because this will twist, I kind of drew it so I could see kind of where it even was. Now, this, if I take my clay and put over this whole thing, then I'm sure I'm going to be centered. If you don't care or don't want it centered and or don't have one of these, that's just totally fine too. Um, oh, why did I take that off? You could just put the clay over the top and, um, and not worry about center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my clay and I'm just going to bring it across here and set it down where I know I have enough all the way around. There we go, just like that. And I'm just lightly pressing it. This this clay is pretty pretty floppy anyway. And let me get my red ribbon. Because I didn't get my yellow one brought up here, so we will work with the yellow one. I will tell you guys, hang with me and you will learn how to improvise and how to get by and how to come up with all kinds of <clears throat> uh, ways of doing things you would have never thought of because if I don't have the perfect 
thing, the perfect tool, the perfect rib, the perfect this, the perfect that. I find something to make make do with. I don't know if y'all were I'm gonna sit down here. Um, oh, you know what? I forgot to put myself up here where we can talk. How about this? How about that? Um, I don't know how many of you were here and were on when um, one night I forgot my rolling pin. I mean, come on, what potter forgets the rolling pin for goodness sakes? Well, I did. And um, so when I needed to roll my slab out, I used a bottle of my glaze that I had with me. And you know what? It worked. It worked just totally fine. So I'm gonna <coughs> go around here. I did make one um, just a little earlier so that when I need to flip this, I can, because this will be floppy, I can show you. And this, this rib, for some reason, is crumbing this up, but that's okay. I'm going to uncrumb it. That's a technical potter term that you should put in your vocabulary. Uncrumb it. Do you see why I don't teach English? Okay. So I can see, I can see my template all around here perfectly well. And because it's a quarter inch thick, my needle tool will slide around it. But the other thing I want to do first is I want to take, I use my U-bolt. See, you can see it all under there. I use my little U-bolt I get at the hardware store and I like to come around and get this excess clay off of here because otherwise I catch myself on it and then I can very easily wreck my project. So I find this little thing works so good for that. I would not use baby oil on it, no. I would use mineral oil, linseed oil, uh, oh, good catch. Linseed oil, um, even cooking oil. The cooking oil can go rancid in time, um, but it would not use baby oil. That's just gonna goo it up and gum it up. Um, oh, and not that you're using it around the fire, but baby oil is also flammable. Um, the template could be made into a bird, beak on one side and add telfels on the other. Yes, it could. This is called my birdie baker. Um, you could you could definitely stick tails a, tail feathers out. You could put a, a bird feather in the middle when you flip it over. So I am going to take my needle tool, bring it in until I hit that template. And then I'm just going to spin my banding wheel around. Um, and sometimes if I have a lot of clay, I'll just take it off so it's out of my way. And again, this is just going to slide right around here um, because of the thickness. And if you go, oops, and slip a pedal, that's quite all right too. It's not going to hurt anything. All you're going to do is stick it right back in where you were and continue to glide along. Um, look at this. Where are you? Look at that. Look how thick that texture is. I hate to waste that, but I don't know that I have anything with me that I can use that for. I am going to stick it. You know what I could have done? Um, no, I can't. I can't go down that way. Okay, so now you could also you could also use one of these little flowers and on the bottom. Huh? Yeah, well, I could if I cut around that and used it for a foot. I could do that. I could cut around any one of these little flowers and use them for a foot, but I'm not going to worry about that at the moment. Okay, so what I want to do now is, you know, I'm kind of kind of done with the whole, all of this. I can get rid of this if I could pull my little peg out. There it is. But now, again, with my templates, I like to go around the edge and clean this up. And I like to hold it up here where I can see what I'm doing. And I don't have to worry about flopping it. Um, as you guys know, I do 
tend to get a little clumsy, which is fine. And look at this. This is so cute. And then, of course, when it fires, it shrinks down just a little bit. What kind of things would you put in this? Sylvia McDonald, that is quite all right. You are here. Yes, you can get a gallon of uh, mineral oil, very inexpensive, on Amazon. Um, you can also, your local pharmacy carries mineral oil, very inexpensive. Um, Walmart. Walmart any of those places, very easy to get your hands on mineral oil, and uh, it's, it's good. You can take a paper towel and pour it on there and dab it on your pen. You can soak your pen in it if you would like. Pour it in if you have an old cake pan or something. Pour it in there and then just put your pen in and kind of spin it around and, and that kind of thing and let it soak in because as I said these are wood and look at the depth of this cut you know it's it's pretty deep you go any much deeper than this you're gonna burn it and or crack it so it's it's you know you don't want to do that you don't want to burn it you don't want to crack it but you want good deep luscious luscious texture all right so have this part Ooh, spin it around. I have this nice and done. And what I would do is I would really just let this move it over and let it set, form it all. Or if you, this is going to make your lip kind of straight out. If you don't like your lip to be kind of straight out so that then when it fires it might slump down just a little bit, you can flip this over, pop your template off, and put a, a little spacer or a little piece of wood or whatever and then set it back down. In fact, I might do that. Let me do that. Let me flip this over because I don't like them. I don't like them flat my rims to be flat, but let me take this over. It might still be a little wet to even pop this up. Oh, nope, there it comes. Look how easy that came up. Okay, while that's up, I can actually get those little crumbs off. I'm gonna, can you see this? Okay, see how the lip just sits straight? But first off, let's, let's talk about this for a second. If I hadn't put texture on this, maybe I just left it plain. I could take my stamps and go around this edge and that would be just adorable as well. But what I wanna do here is I wanna take, do we have any little forms underneath, the one underneath that or, you know what? I'll do this. Let's improvise. I don't need that. I need, I could even take my cap and put it underneath this, flip it back over, and set my cap down, set it down on my cap, get the little crummy off, and what I can do is just lightly go around with my sponge that is. I mean, I can't even squeeze it out. It's that light. And just barely, barely go around so that it slightly tilts down. And then you'll have that little bit of an arch. And, uh, and then when it fires, it'll, it'll be really good. There. What do you think of that? So I have, I have one over here that I made earlier so that I can flip. I showed you this out. In fact, let me do this. Glutton for punishment, and I, I am. I am a glutton for punishment to see if I can wreck it, because this is early. See, I just put a little cap on there. And do you see now that this slightly angles up, not even enough to notice? 
well, if I take this out, I probably won't get it back in, but oops, I just caught the edge. And that's okay, you can just fix that really easily. I pulled that off and hit the edge. But what do you think of that? I mean, what a little holiday bird. Think of all the little birdie things you can do with that. Um, you don't, if you don't put texture in there, you can glaze the inner part to be a little bird. You can put an eyeball, you can put a wing, you can put little feathers. You can put stamps around the edges. Um, even this shape, even with nothing on it and gorgeous glazing is beautiful. You can take this, you can take this and put um, little cactus dirt in there and put succulents in that. How cute would that be? I want to see if I can stick this back in. I don't know which way it spun out. This way. Let's see. No, nope, I'm just going to go set it aside. I don't think I'm going to be able to stick that back in. Um, let's see. If we, what else could we do with this? If I had my, if I had my um, garden art, yes. Oh, okay. So here's something, guys. If we made two of these, and then we put them together, top and bottom, and seal around the edge, put a hole in it so that you could put a garden stake in it. Is that one stiff at all over there? Can I have that one? It's kind of floppy, too. Okay, here's the one I did earlier so that I could show you when it's flipped. It's still not quite set. I don't know why, but just think. We're going to do something here. I'm going to probably flop these. Let's see. It would be... Oh, you know what you'd have to do? You'd have to be smarter than the template, wouldn't you? You would have to... Let me have my template come out here. What you would have to do is... Cut one on one side and cut one on the other side so that when you put them like together, they would match. If you did, and you know, I always tell you, work on the brown side. Doesn't mean the, darn it. Doesn't mean the black side is bad or black side is wrong. It just simply takes a little longer for the clay to come off. But if you wanted to put these two together, huh, I can do this one which would be this. Okay, let me move this. I'm gonna set this sideways. See what you would have there if you put those two together like that? What about even if you did one that was flat and you put the flat piece on the top, slip and score, put it together, put a little hole in it, what do you have? An Ichabonna. How many of you like Ichabonnas? Get yourself a little frog pen. And um, do you know what a frog pen is? There's those little metal things that have little sharp nails sticking up and you stick them in the hole to stick your flower in it. But this would make an excellent Ichabonna by even just putting another one over the top and then putting a hole some little organic style of hole in it. And um, if you have a tiny crack on the line, can you still visit fire after putting underglaze on it? It depends on where you're saying your line is. Um, there's, there's nothing on this that would probably crack unless Maybe you pushed really hard and had a little hairline crack in the seam. Um, underglaze or glaze may heal that in the firing. Um, but anytime you see a crack, you're, you're risking, if it's a functional piece, you're risking the integrity of it. Um, can I say I've never done it? Oh no, I think we've all done it. 
Um, but um, it's, it's not something I would probably sell because I would be risking that integrity. But if it's, you know, an art piece for you or something, yeah. Any other questions on this? I didn't think this would go as fast. Well, I didn't put, um, I didn't put uh, a foot on this. I should have probably put a foot on this so it would go faster. And then, what would you do with all of this? Huh. I would roll it back out and I would make another one. So, um, I know, I know, shoot, there was a whole set of these somebody purchased this week. Um, what are some other ideas you can do with this? And Mariana, please tell me where your crack is. Mm -hmm. You know, you could, you, you could put a back on this and make wall flowers. Um, you could make them a flock of birds, straight glaze, if you didn't want to texture it. And could you imagine having like three of these going up the side of your wall um, with some really cool, just solid glazes on there and you have them going up your wall? That would be adorable as well. Any other questions? This one went really fast. I didn't expect it to go this fast. No? Um, let me see. Pocket bird. Love it. Yes, that's a great idea as well. Um, you could put you could put the other piece on. You could cut out the other piece, cut that in half and put that on the front and then hang that and put all kinds of stuff in that. It would be, the other thing is I call this my birdie baker because um, it is perfect once you've finished it and it's fired, it's a perfect size. Looks a little big, but when it goes down a little bit, um, for little individual desserts, if you wanted to serve individual desserts in this, um, a wedge of pie and a ball of ice cream. Stacy, garden art, um, and Misty both garden art. Misty asked what size that comes in. Um, it comes in an eight, eight inch. The forms are eight inch, nine and a half. The forms he's telling me because he makes the forms are eight, nine and a half, and eleven, and um, the templates are going to be about an inch, inch and a half bigger per each one. Templates are nine and a half, eleven, and twelve. And nine and a half, eleven, twelve and a half. You could do, um, you could very easily do a garden. Oh, oh, oh! Come on, help me out. Garden set the birds and a rock mm -hmm, garden stack totem the birds rocks birds rocks oh that would be adorable hmm I may have to do that oh I think I'm gonna do that now you can when you if you put it together and if you did it with both of them done with the form so they're thick or even just put them together I would take some um, newsprint or newspaper and wad it up really tightly and put in the middle of it and then put your other piece on that'll just kind of help it um, to, to keep from collapsing Jen bird feeder yes would be adorable hey and you know for a bird feeder you can put holes strategically here and hang it from a chain or you can do like the pocket bird and where your pocket is on the front, put a stick coming out, put a hole, put a stick coming out the front and um, the birds could get their seed from when it's setting this way, it would be, let's see, this way. 
So let's say it was like this and cut in half. Their feed, their their bird seed could be in there. So now these forms, Chris, my forms aren't made to stack um, because I. Um, drop the edges off so they're not poking out so they don't poke in the clay um, but I will tell you <coughs> we have made um, this one happens to be one of my old ones which is a form with the um, angle but what I use now pretty much all the time is my dual drape so instead of having the angle instead of having this angle like this which dictates how much of an angle I'm allowed to put on there we have almost every shape now in the drape form, which is a straight side, and instead of a sharper edge, it's nice and round. So you get that smooth edge on the inside. So when you put your clay over it, I don't have a piece, when you put your clay over it, you can put anything under it you want and give yourself the extra height. Um, could you hand me back the pause, puppy pause. So this was done with a dual drape. So you see how kind of rounded off, up and smooth that is. And the depth of this one, I didn't even push down very much. But you can get as much depth or as little depth as you want with those dual drapes. You can drape over them and put another form under them to get height. You can press them. That's why I call them dual drapes because you can use them as a form or use them as a push and get as much or as little height as you want. So I find I primarily use those because these tell me what my angle is going to be and I prefer to choose my own. But this was handy and um, I do use forms so I wanted to show that. Um, yes, and no lines. Oh, and by the way, um, well, I'm going to say that's the price. Um, we're, doing, we're doing deep dishes with almost every single form we have. So it will also be a deep dish. And those have the holes in the back. Um, so like this one. This one, actually the one I made earlier, I don't know if you can see right here, I, there was a leaf there. See how it's blank now? There was a leaf there. Because when I went to pull the form out, um, you know, I tried to get it out and I dropped it on its edge and gouged it. And so I went like this and I had to get rid of the leaf that was there to try to get the line out of it. Well, the deep dish forms have this, have the little um, bowling ball. So I dropped this on my bird. Um, so when you have this in and you just lift it up, there's no more trying to grab the sides and, and drop it. And that's how the bowling ball effect took place because Almost every time I go to bring a form out, I will drop it back on my piece. So, handheld for me. Any other questions? Because we are about 10 minutes till, and I do have my other group after this. Um, and we're gonna do some fun stuff tonight. Um, let's see. Deep dish forms need a curvaceous. Um, that's done, right? That's a curvaceous deep dish. Yeah. Okay. Is it in the um, drape? Is she wanting a deep dish? Curvaceous is in the drape, but she wanting a deep dish because she had that way. Oh. <laughs> The curvaceous, how deep did you want it, Melissa? And did you want it, did you want it with the angle or did you want it straight? I'm gonna show it. She did bottom seven piece had curvaceous 
Oh, what? She's wanting the curvaceous deep dish, the one solid piece one. Right. So, this is a deep dish drape, a dual drape. Notice how this one's a two stacker. It's solid, it's one piece that you can go over without the angle and or you can create your own angle. So are you looking for curvaceous that way or the curvaceous with the edge? And the three, I see the three. Um, Ask Melissa what size she wanted a 3D. What's, what size are you looking for, Melissa? And are you wanting the, the angle or do you want it depth with straight? The, the last <laughs> one. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You must see something Listen, I don't get. Listen, oh Angle. my gosh, I don't have any strength that deep dish. Oh, <laughs> well, no, because they're brand new. Um, because, because I started using all the drape forms instead of the forms, I'm like, can you make these thicker? And we'll talk about that in the next, um, in the next class because um, I have some things to talk about there. Any other three inch angled? Bettina asked, asked me a question. So can you use a drape for a push plate tube? 100% Bettina. That's why I call them dual drapes because you can um, go over and you can, I mean you can form the plate over and you can push it um, into the foam. When I push in the foam, um, I put a piece of craft foam down on my phone so that once I push in, I can lift that craft foam, stick my hand in there to lift it up and flip it over so that then, so then I have it over so that then I can kind of fiddle a little more if I want to get more, um, more depth to it. Look how pretty this V-Mix fires up with that clear glaze on that. So pretty. Okay, anything else? If not, I'm going to go ahead and cut it a few minutes early so I can run downstairs between my, before I do my next one. And um, I will see some of you in the Slab to Fab community or society communities on the other side. I guess that's it. I'm waiting for some lag. I don't see anything else. So I will see you next week. Bye, everybody.